that was a lot of notes. <laughs> um, hi, my name is Yvette and I play in the band Covet. For this episode of Riff Rundown, I'm going to be teaching you the guitar solo wee bit from our song Nero. I jokingly call a lot of my riffs basically long run-on sentences because what I'm doing is I'm like tacking on little parts and building it into one big flowy sentence. Um, so yeah, when I'm learning a riff like like what I just played, I like to chunk it into little bits because oftentimes it's a bit daunting to have to learn the whole thing. So this riff that I'm about to teach you is basically four main sections. There's two variants um, and I'm going to be referring each section to um, a letter like A, B, C, and D. So before I actually begin, I, um, I wanted to let you guys know the tuning I'm in because this wouldn't sound the same in standard, would it? <laughs> um, so the tuning is D, A, C sharp, F sharp, E. It sounds like this. So once you're all tuned up, uh, we're ready for section A. Section A happens twice in this riff. The second time is actually a variant of A, but let's just focus on getting A down. Um, I'm gonna play it very slowly and point out some notable things after I play it very slowly. <laughs> um, oh yeah, a quick tip is for speed, um, for the sake of making everything more economic for it myself, I'm picking on the fretboard because I'm actually gonna have to tap. Um, and the reason I do that is because if you have to pick down here and then suddenly tap, you're losing so much time just moving back and forth. And this riff, when it's full speed, it it goes. <laughs> so, um, you know, I don't really have the time to jump back and forth. So I'm gonna go ahead and play section A really slowly. Um, and then there's two little tricky sections of this, but um, I'll go ahead and explain them in detail after I play it slowly to kind of point out what I'm doing there. Uh, the it starts with the hammer-on situation. <laughs> hammer-on situation kind of sounds like the name of a ska band. Sorry, I just had to mention that. Um, so you're gonna start with the open low E being pulled off. There's the hammer-on and it's on um, the G string, the 10th fret. kind of weird um that's pretty normal and then that might feel a little uncomfortable for some people because it usually when you tap on two frets it's kind of you know people want to just do a parallel tap but you're gonna have to pivot your hand a little bit this way to really hit that 15th and 16th fret Another weird part. <laughs> so you're actually sliding one fret over and you're sliding two frets over there. And you're doing that together. So yeah, those are the tricky parts of section A. So section B is gonna happen all the way down here. It's a series of hammer-ons and pull-offs. So I'll play it really slowly. Section C actually has one of my favorite chords in the entire song. Um, but I'm going to play it for you real slow <laughs> so you can see what I'm doing. Uh, really quick note, instead of playing the broken chord just straight, you're going to actually hammer on that second note. That does is it just it just gives a little extra pizzazz. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna play it now. Make sure to really. 
literally pluck those that low string on the last two chords. So it sounds like. Uh, pretty straightforward as well. So for that last C section, I like to add a chorus on it, and I take that chorus away um, halfway through the section, the part as well. And I'll show you what that sounds like. <laughs> to section A, but there's a slight variant this time, and I'll point it out. Um, I'm going to play it, and I'll show you where the variant occurs. So that's a, that's a bit weird. <laughs> you're basically, you're going to do a tap slide, but you're sliding different distances on the string. So um, normally, you know, you want to do a parallel slide, but you're going to slide two frets with your middle finger and uh, one fret with your pointer finger. So. And then the rest is pretty much the same. Sorry, that's not helpful. The rest is the same. <laughs> so this next section is B again, but there's a variation that happens at the end. And I'll point it out when I play it. Uh, this is a section where you're gonna wish your picking on the fretboard because you're actually going to have to tap at the end and it's just a long distance of travel. So here it is, B variation. So. Actually, um, I like to mute the strings from ringing out with my left hand. Makes it a lot cleaner. So here we are at section D, the last section. Congrats, you've made it to the end. Um, the only notable thing about this section is that we're going to be giving the trim some love. So <laughs> um, I'll point out when that happens. But first, it sounds like this. like to um to slide to the next part of the section while still holding down the bar so um and then i release it as soon as i hit the hit these chords <laughs> played all these sections separately really slowly let's try to string it all together um, just a little practice tip when I have to play really intricate long things like this I like to practice all the sections like a B C and D individually and then I practice stringing a and B together B and C together and you know so on so on you get the idea uh, that way you're you're kind of like practicing uh, targeting your practice on on trouble areas and then when you finally have to play it all together um, You're fluent already um, and I usually don't let myself move on to a new part until I can successfully string together The part prior if that makes sense kind of like a video game like you can't go to level two until you complete level one um, So let's play it at normal speed um, and real quick, I'm not using a compressor or anything right now, but live I probably would to mm -hmm. even out some of the notes. But I like to practice without because I feel like it just makes me um, more accurate and, uh, you know, I feel like sometimes with compression you can just coast. I don't want to coast right now. I want to practice uh, accuracy. So. <laughs> 